Hi, I'm Liz, a Library Program Coordinator for the Collider Program here at the South Central Regional Library. Today we want to make some crafts with you so you can do them at home. We also want to check in with our March Artist-in-Residence, Marlisha Woods. And today I'm going to show you a craft project that you can do at home. It's a spring wreath. To start out with your project, you'll need a few supplies. The first is going to be cardboard. You'll also want to grab a pencil, scissors, and some glue, as well as some paper. So the first step is to take your cardboard and cut out a circle. If you don't have any cardboard at home, you can get creative. You can use a cereal box or some thick paper. This circle is about nine inches in diameter, but you can make yours any size that you like. Just be sure to cut out the circle and then cut out a circle in the middle. The next step is going to be cutting out leaves on your paper. So I use the Cricut machine at the South Central Regional Library to make my leaves, but it's very easy to do this at home by drawing them. So you wanna draw your first leaf just with your pencil and then cut that out. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're gonna have multiple leaves, so you won't really notice. The next step, once you've got your first template, is to trace that in the color that you wanna use for your wreath and then cut them out. You'll need probably about 30 leaves for this project. For this next step, you're gonna take the cardboard wreath base that you cut out and the pages that are leaves that you cut out. You can use any kind of paper, construction paper, copy paper, notebook paper even. You could just color it the certain color that you like. I'm using some cardstock. You're also gonna need some glue and it's very easy to just put a dot of glue on the bottom of your leaf and put it on the wreath form. And then you're gonna do three leaves at a time. So for the second row, you just layer those leaves on top of your shape and you're gonna continue doing that with each row. So I put a dot of glue on each of the bottoms of the leaves and then I'm just gonna layer it on top. And you can turn the leaves for some dimension. You can also fold some of them. So to cut out some different flower shapes, you can use whatever color paper you have on hand and just go with the flow. It doesn't have to look a certain way. Altogether, it's gonna be very pretty. So for a daisy, you can just do a white flower shape and then a yellow center. And then you can use some glue to attach the center to the flower. Once you have your different flower shapes created and your leaves attached to your cardboard, you can start to add the flowers on top. I've just put a little glue on the back of the flowers and then I'm attaching them to the wreath. Once your wreath is all completed, you've got all your leaves and flowers in the order that you like, you just wanna attach a ribbon at the top. So to do that, you just wanna cut a length of the ribbon and you can tie a little bow at the top, sort of like how you would tie your shoelaces. Once your bow is ready, then you can just glue the tail ends of the ribbon to the back of your wreath. And then you have a completed flower wreath. In addition to the flower wreath that you created, you could use brown craft paper like I have done here and some blue eggs to make a bird's nest. These are two great options of spring crafts that you can do at home. Hello, my name is Marlisha Woods, and I am so glad to connect with you via social media. So if you were able to attend any of the public workshops or even come and see the studio while the library was open, I wanna say thank you very much. And I would like to welcome you into the virtual studio that will be showcased uh, starting next week on Monday. You'll be able to tune in to at Marlisha Art, and that is M-A-R-L-E-S-H-A, RT, the A is shared, Marlisha Art. If you go there on Instagram or even on Facebook, you'll be able to find workshop uh, opportunities where you can do stuff from home. Uh, you can engage your children, those that have kiddos and you're stuck in. Um, I'll be at home also with my little, and I wanna make sure that everyone has something fun to do. All right, so come and be engaged with me 
virtually. Um, also, I want to just kind of show you around some of the spaces in the library if you weren't able to attend at the South uh, Central Regional. They've got some really beautiful aesthetics and uh, I have a background in interior design. So this is gorgeous, right? This is eye candy for me. Um, I love this space so much because not just the aesthetics, but what it brings in with some of the sustainable items that I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, this is one of my abstract paintings. And if you were in the studio, you have, would have seen that I like to fuse figurative art and abstract art together, right? So this is very abstract conceptual design, right? Expressionism. But then also there are times throughout the year that I'm a commissioned artist where I bring in portraiture. So there will be a figure coming in there. And you'll see that in a little bit. As I pack up the studio, you get to come that journey with me. Hello everyone. So I'm actually in the Collider studio right now. And I just discussed that I do create some abstract works. And so as you can see, there's some abstract paintings here. Uh, also on the table over there, one of the studio tables, I'm kind of packing up right now and transitioning into the home studio. But I did want to showcase some of the figurative works, right? Because I did say I like to blend the two. Some people feel like you have to kind of pick one. Single-minded, right? Just one track. But I like to use that growth mindset. And along the way, um, I have a lot of people to thank for that. I was connected at one point with Louisville Visual Arts Association as a small child, so I was one of those students. Um, I live in Metro Louisville, Southern Indiana, and I was able to hone those skills through a program extremely young age. Uh, I was able to be at art camps and all kinds of programs that we're kind of connecting with virtually right now, right? So I would like to bring in some art programs for children uh, next week to give them what I was able to get when I was a little. Um, so these pieces here, none of these pieces are quite finished yet, but they are going to be showcased for Kentucky Refugee Ministries. Uh, I work with various nonprofits throughout the year uh, and they're celebrating this year, 30 years of service in Metro Global. So I'm really excited about that, right? So if you would like to see this finished work, make sure you stay connected with KRM uh, in the months to follow. Thanks. All right, so at the South Central Regional Library, I'm very excited to say that uh, not only does the design have ample windows, right, which gives us all natural light. If you've ever engaged in art at any point, you know that natural light is our best friend to get the purest form of color. Uh, for me, that was great for being in the Collider Studio. But I do want to speak about something that's very unique. So if you were able to come to the workshops, great. When we reopen at one point, you'll see it for yourself that in the Maker's Lab, all of the work surfaces are actually from reclaimed wood, right? So the trees, the naturescape around surrounding areas of the South Central Regional Library were also brought in integral parts of the design. It's really unique. So when you walk in, you may see this, and it does look like an art installation piece, right? Like this doesn't look like typical library. This is more like museum. You see this somewhere in a very metropolitan area. However, this is actually one of the art pieces and also speaking to the sustainable design uh, when you first walk into the foyer of the library. So I thought that was really unique. Uh, again, I stated that I have a background in interior design and so all of these little pieces to the puzzle made me drawn to the Collider. It's not just creating the art, because as I stated before in the first video, which I'm glad that you watched. Thank you so much. I saw like, oh my goodness, 1300 some people saw it and I don't know who you are, but I'm super excited and I'm appreciative for that. But I, I just, I love this space for so many reasons, right? Um, I'm a mother and my daughter's an avid reader and we engage all the time from Captain Underpants, you name it, like, let's go, right? So we've got the reading component, we've got the creating and the making with the maker space, the maker's lab, the Collider Studio, and the community. I've met people um, from this particular area and I didn't know who they were, but they were warm and welcoming. And I want that same engagement on social media, right? So stay tuned for more from Collider Artists in Residence because March is not over, so there's more to come. Most of you all, of course, you're watching me via social media. So you have some type of connection with either Instagram, Facebook, some of the more common social media platforms. I wanted to let you know that the world is an extremely large place, right? But social media makes it so much smaller. Uh, we are connected um, via social media, not just now, but moving forward. I really would like you to stay connected with the Louisville Free Public Library. And of course, connect with me at Marlisha Art. And again, that is at Marlisha, M-A-R-L-E-S-H-A-R-T. The A in the shared with Art, Marlisha Art. All right, so I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook as well. 
and I would like you to connect with me, not just because of what I'm doing. Like, it's really cool for the support. I get it uh, all year long. It's really cool to get so much engagement. People um, from all different walks of life, diverse groups, they're really interested in the art piece because art brings people together. Hence why the Collider's here, right? Um, but I want you to connect with a lot of the nonprofit organizations that I work with. Uh, they've done great work throughout the years. I'm just happy and, and really fortunate to be connected with them. So please stay tuned to see what they're doing, right? I'm just a conduit, a piece to the puzzle, as you see here with this uh, lovely piece of artwork that you can see in person eventually at the library, but stay connected as much as possible, right? Um, we're creating together in the very near future, and I uh, thank you for your time. Thanks. Today we're going to make a owl craft out of a toilet paper roll. Now I hope you have some of these at home. I know that things are getting scarce out there, but thank you so much for making this craft and I want to tell you a little bit about what you need. So um, paper plate if you've got it so you can put your paint colors on your paper plate, a pencil or pen, marker, or any sort of drawing tool, any sort of paintbrush works, even an old toothbrush will work your empty toilet paper roll, glue or tape, either one is acceptable, and then a couple different colors of paper, scissors, and a couple different colors of tissue paper. Ribbon also works. So the first thing we're gonna do for our owl body is to make a pattern paper like this one. To do the dots, I basically just put some paint on a paper plate, so that can be like your artboard. And then I use the tip of a pencil dipped in the paint, and then you just sort of stamp that on your paper. If you don't have a pencil at home that you wanna use for this pattern paper, you can use other things like this fork. So you would just dip the tongs of the fork on your paint, and then you can make a pattern on your paper using your fork. And this is just a fun activity for home, so don't worry too much about perfecting your pattern. We're just sort of going with the flow here. And any of these materials can be substituted for things that you have at home. So the next part of your owl is to actually paint your toilet paper roll. And we've got this basic cardboard um, here. If you don't have a toilet paper roll, you could cut a paper towel roll in half. You could use any sort of boxy cardboard. You could use a raisin box, anything that you have on hand. And then you just wanna take some paint. I'm using green. You can use any color that you have. And you just wanna apply that to your cardboard. Because it's paper, it should dry pretty quickly, but you do wanna make sure that the paint is all dry before you move on to the next step. Now that your paint is dry on both your toilet paper roll and your pattern paper, you're gonna actually start cutting out the pieces for your owl. So this is going to be the owl body. This is going to be the stomach for the owl. So I'm just gonna kind of draw a little stomach shape that I'm gonna cut out of the paper. And that's gonna get attached to your toilet paper roll. There are some other pieces you wanna cut out of the paper as well to help assemble. First, you want some eyes. So I'm gonna draw some nice big eyes for our owl. I'm gonna use a marker to color in the center of the eyes. You're also gonna cut out a beak for your owl and some wings for your owl. I'm just gonna do a basic wing shape but you could put some feathers in there if you want. And then I'm gonna cut out these pieces. Once you've got all your pieces for your owl cut out, then it's time to assemble. So we've got our toilet paper roll that's been painted, that's on the base. And then we've got our owl body and I added some little feet to the bottom. I just taped them to the back. Then you can use some tape or some glue to attach the wings. So we're gonna do that on each side of our owl. And then you're gonna attach the eyes once you've got the wings attached. 
And I'm just using tape because that's something easy that I had lying around, but if you've got glue at home, that's gonna be sturdier and you can use glue. So the eyes are getting attached and you might play around with it and move it if you feel like you need to. And then because this beak is so little, I'm just gonna put a dot of glue and put the beak down. Just sort of use the tip of my scissors. That's a good tip so you don't get glue on your fingers and just kind of let that set. Once that's set, we're gonna then attach the rest of the owl body to our toilet paper roll. So I am again, just gonna use some tape and attach the owl to the toilet paper roll. We're gonna make this little owl extra festive today and we're gonna hang some streamers from the bottom of the toilet paper roll. So I've got some different colors of tissue paper. I'm just gonna kind of stack them up on top of each other and cut little strips. Then we're gonna take our strips of tissue paper and we're just gonna again using the tape we're gonna tape them along the inside of the toilet paper roll so it's probably easier to tape your tissue paper and then stick it on the inside and then you can grab another one put a piece of tape on it and then put it on the inside and just kind of rotate all the way around your toilet paper roll Okay. Thank you for making this owl craft with me today. You can see we've got the streamers hanging from the bottom. You can put a piece of yarn on the top and hang it around your house. It's a fun little guy to keep you company right now. So again, thank you so much from the South Central Regional Library. We can't wait to see you again soon.